there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today is a really fun video where we are going to make a shaped birthday card. We are not using any dies or anything fancy other than scissors to create this and I think it comes out looking pretty cool. Today I'm going to make one that fits in my normal four and a quarter by five and a half inch um, kind of card base size so that it fits in all of my envelopes no matter who I end up giving it to. I'm going to start off with some patterned paper and I just chose a kind of more bold print and then a patterned print and I would quite like them to match give or take. Then I also have my plain card base here. As I said, at the moment, this measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And this video today is definitely just the way that I find it easiest to do things. So I find it easiest to cover my entire card front in my base um, kind of color pattern, whatever you end up choosing. And this is just how I like to do it. Sometimes uh, you can obviously pre-cut this down. However, if my measuring is a little bit off or if something's a little bit off, then it can ruin it. So I just find this the easiest way. I plonk my six by six piece of pattern paper right on there, grab some long bladed Tim Holtz scissors, and then I can just easily slice down the edges and everything is neat so far. Now, as I said, there are lots of different ways to do this, and this is a really simple shaped card. Depending on the colors that you want to use, this could be used for anyone. Now, I'm going to go two and a quarter inches, uh, just mark two and a quarter and then four and a half on the way up here, and then I'm just going to draw a line straight across for this. Now, for me, I generally draw kind of a really light pencil line, and then when I realize that you guys can't see this, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. When I'm doing a project, I usually wouldn't make really dark pencil lines, but given that I'm trying to show you guys, then I am just going to make them a little bit darker. They're going to end up pretty much disappearing, so not to worry anyway. Now, from here, I'm just going to measure one and a half centimeters. Don't ask me why I changed to centimeters. Uh, one side of this ruler has inches and one has centimeters. And uh, of course, usually I would use centimeters here in New Zealand because we use the metric system. However, I have become quite accustomed to uh, using the imperial system inches uh, because it's just mainly what I feel uh, is used in the card making world. And now it is definitely probably my preference. I just naturally kind of use uh, go in inches and things. But anyway, my point is, is that it doesn't matter how far in you go. This is just creating the second layer of the cake. So all we're going to do is cut off the top part. And then all I want to do is just follow in where we are going with those lines that we have. And this is going to create the second layer. As I said, if you used any different colors, then you could create this for any occasion, for any age. Uh, you could decorate the cake in so many different ways, but I'm just going to go really plain and simple today, and yet I still think this looks stunning, and it's a pretty cool kind of shaped cut. But as I said, you can take this so far. You could even have a pop-up option kind of uh, when they opened the cut on the inside. I mean lots of options. So all I'm doing is cutting these out. I use my big Tim Holtz scissors to kind of get through the main part and then my little finer cutter bee ones just to do those very little corners there. And so far this is what we have done. I'm going to keep that little bit of scrap there because I'm going to use that in just a minute as well to create another part later on. Um, but then when it comes to this part, this is all completely optional. I wanted to ink up the edges just a little bit. I do find when I'm going to use uh, pattern paper and things, I quite like inking up the edges. You can skip this. I prefer just to use a little finger dobber because it gets in all those little corners pretty good. And then I also like to do the inside as well. Again, this is just personal preference. You might like to keep the inside completely clean. So if you were doing that at this point, you might put a piece of paper in between um, just so you don't get it over to the inside. However, if you see here, the top part I have inked and the bottom part I hadn't inked and it just makes a real difference. I like because uh, this one in particular is going for a younger girl and so I like to do a little bit of pink on the inside as well. Again, all those just little finishing touches. Now I'm going to move on to my pattern paper and all I'm going to do here is use my scissors to create kind of the icing drizzle. 
There is no rhyme or reason as to how I do this. I kind of just go wild with the scissors. The dots give me a basic line to kind of where I cut up to each time when I come up from the drip. Um, but apart from that, I kind of just go across and what will be will be. And with this being a six by six piece of paper, but obviously I need less um, for the size of my cake. If it's six by six across, it gives me some wiggle room that I can kind of move it back and forward if there's drips that I have created that I like less or like more. Now I prefer using the big scissors. With little scissors like this, I'm just showing you that I have to do kind of more cutting, chopping, little fine, fine movements up and down. Whereas with the longer blades, I tend to get a smoother cut. So my preference is when I use the uh, longer blade scissors, but use what you have and both are going to look pretty cool. So you can see I kind of have that dripping pattern there ready to go. Very, very simple. I mean, you may have dyes that do this as well, and that is good too, but just whatever you have, I don't have the dyes, so scissors are good to go for me. And then what you can do once you have created one side is you can cut off the um, kind of the remaining part of the drips, so to speak, and that can also become drips for your second layer of cake. Then once we put these on, everything is going to kind of start coming together. I don't need to uh, ink up the very top of the cake because it's going to be covered anyway. And uh, when I was going around the edges and then once I put these drips on, I think it starts looking a little bit real. So here you just need to see that I'm going to move along the drips so that it kind of isn't the repeat pattern directly above it. Um, but if you can avoid that, it's good. And if not, that's okay, people probably won't notice. It's probably only us who notice. So I am gonna trim off a little bit more of the top here just so there's a little bit less icing. And then once I think I've got it really good to go, I kind of just, I don't measure anything. If I can avoid measuring in card making, then I will. <laughs> um, if I can just get away with just doing it, then that will be me. Usually I say at this point that there will be a list of supplies in the description box below this video. You might have to click the little more button down the bottom. Um, but honestly, I think you should pretty much have everything at home. If you have been card making for even a short amount of time, I'm pretty sure you have all of these things that you are able to create this card. It is very basic and simple. But I will of course uh, have a list of all the other things, scissors and glue and all those bits and pieces just in case you are interested in checking them out. And then as per usual, I also have some, a few other bits and pieces down there like ways that you can help out my YouTube channel and also I will have um, an address, my PO box is down there in case you want to send me some snail mail, a card. I absolutely love checking my PO box and seeing some bits and pieces there. I so appreciate the time and effort that it takes uh, for you to send a card to me. It really gives me a buzz because I know it's that extra step to get things in the mail these days. Now here is where I started putting together my candle and all I'm doing is cutting out some yellow and some orange scrap paper as well as a purple candle there. I'm putting down a little bit of glue to pop these together, although I did make this candle uh, the flame a little bit smaller in the end. I just freehand cut these. Again, you might have dyes that do this as well in order to avoid um, kind of any having to use any um, bits and pieces on the front of the card to have this kind of standing there, I am going to double this up so that there is no um, adhesive showing on either side. So what I do is I just get a, a little strip of paper, in this case it's purple, and just make sure there is plenty of double-sided adhesive on the inside. This is going to hold my flame in place. If you don't do it this way, then you can also use a little piece of acetate if you want to gap between your candle and your flame. Um, but I cut my flame just ever so slightly smaller. Then I fold the um, other part of the purple candle up and I lost a little bit of footage here. I decided to pop it on the inside of my card and then that way it kind of still looks like a cake as well when you even when you open up the card. Now, I of course wanted to keep my candle short because I want to be able to fit it into my four and a quarter by five and a half inch um, envelopes, or the envelopes are slightly bigger than that, but uh, those are the card size that I was keeping it to. If you uh, want to make a custom card envelope, sorry, then you could make your candle go a little bit taller. For this card, I'm going to use the Botanical Borders with Sentiments. This is an old favorite of mine. I've used this happy birthday so much. There is really, there are five sentiments in this one and it is, they are all really good. Now I just wanted to quickly show you, this is what I would do if I was using the pink ink to stamp out the happy birthday. 
I prefer a really kind of bold statement on these ones. So because I have this in my stamping platform, I'm able to stamp over top in some black ink. And that is generally my preference uh, for these cards to have kind of a really nice bold sentiment down the bottom. Now, you could finish up here and this looks gorgeous and ready to go. I would definitely send this out happily. However, there is always a couple more things that we can do. And one of those is adding some glossy accents to our icing to make this a little more shiny. It's going to go on a little bit cloudy and a little bit of this actually goes a really long way. This is a very small bottle that I'm using. Uh, it does come in bigger bottles and I use both but for some reason I had this one in my stash and I've been using this for the last few months and a little bit goes a really long way. So I just want to show you, when you put it on, it goes on a little bit cloudy, and see I have some bubbles. Now there was a really big one there that I thought I would show you. There are also some finer ones too. All I do is I take a little pin and I go in and pop it. Because this one's so big, I'm going to move around the glossy accents a little bit, and then that way it'll be a really nice smooth finish. There's still one more little one in there, and now it's all gone. So that is my card for today, my shaped birthday card. I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope that this is something you are able to easily achieve at home as well. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, bye!